Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game from Scratch, and today we're going to be talking about the Urho 3D Game Engine. Oh, wait, no, we're not. We're going to be talking about the RBFX Game Engine. Oh, wait, no, we're not. We're going to be talking about the Rebel Fork Game Engine. I'll explain what the hell I'm talking about in just a second. First off, Urho 3D, very cool cross-platform 2D, 3D game engine, open source, and very, very, very dead. You'll notice, actually, if you come and take a look at it, this webpage is archived. There was a very nasty community schism split. Basically, the project is now toast. So community manager just kind of took his ball and went home. It was not pretty. But uh, this is a game engine that's been around for a very long time. Going back to 2011, I first looked at the Urho 3D game engine in 2014. So that was 11 years ago for me. And it was three or four years into development at that point in time. It's a very cool project, or at least it was a very cool project. And as I reported back in January of 2023, uh, it's also a very dead project project. Uh, it was killed off due to a schism uh, that happened. Some details of it right here. I'm not going to go back through the schism part of things. Just going to let you know it does live on in the form of RBFX, which I mentioned over here. There's also another spinoff called uh, U3D Engine. I'll probably cover that at some other point in the future. We're not going to be talking about that one specifically today. Instead, what we are talking about is RBFX. So this is a C++ 17 game engine uh, with a WYSIWYG editor, experimental C Sharp bindings, uh, and as you can see, it is MIT licensed, it is free and open source, and will stay that way. It's suitable for 3D games and applications. It is lightweight and modular. It supports Windows, Linux, Mac OS, Android, iOS, web, and Xbox via UWP. Uh, it's just a C Sharp, uh, sorry, C plus library with a couple of tools, and there are experimental bindings for C Sharp. I'll show you how to use those later on in this video. If you want to go ahead and check it out, there is a sample project that you can basically start from. Instructions are available for how to get up and going with this simple, safe uh, project, but I'm going to show you another way around it, and that is basically to come on in here, grab the latest binaries. This will get you the. Um, the core of what you need. So I'm going to go ahead and grab the SDK, this guy right here. Uh, we'll save that, and we will save that into my temp directory over here. All right, so there we go. So there is where uh, the projects are available from. By the way, there is full documentation of Rebel Fork. So if you want to learn more about how things work, uh, that documentation is available. But that is it for the website of things. Let me go ahead and show you how this actually works. So hopefully that is downloaded at this point in time. So let's head on over into our temp. No, it's not. So let's give it a second. Alrighty, we are downloaded. We'll just go ahead and we'll extract this project out. Now there's a bunch of small files in here, so this might take a second to go ahead and extract out. Uh, but there we go. So there is our pre-compiled binaries. As you saw back on the page, though, there were um, there were binaries for multiple different uh, builds. So the latest binaries also include uh, Linux, Mac OS, and so on. So pick the right version for what you need. Uh, and this is how you would get to the editing tools if you want to start there. So just go ahead and open that one up, go into the SDK. Uh, I think it's bin and then release with debug info and let's fire up the editor. So you get an idea of exactly what a project looks like. So let's go ahead and create a new project. Uh, we will create that once again in temp. So it's C colon temp like so. Uh, create a new folder called not Urho. All right, so let's create our project right there. So just basically give you a simple starting point. And here you can see the lightweight editor that comes with it. Uh, pretty straightforward. So you got our, our th items in the world. You got 3D manipulators using, by the way, the standard QWERTY uh, for navigating between the various different options. Uh, you've got, again, simple objects in the world. You'll see over here, your scene graphs organized here. This is the uh, sample cube, which you'll notice is very much a teapot, uh, loaded from a model. It uses asymp on the back end in terms of for bringing your content in, by the way. Uh, so let's do something simple with this guy. So here we got a ground plane. You're going to see it is component driven. So let's add a new component to this. We'll make this physics, uh, rigid body here, and that is uh, no mass doesn't use gravity, make it available there. And we'll go ahead and add in, again, a physics uh, collision shape, uh, and that is of type static plane. All right, so here we go. And then the second thing here, we've got our uh, cube. We'll take that guy up over here. Once again, we'll add a physics object to it. So you get an idea of how the component-based system works. By the way, here are your other components that are available. So you've got particle systems. Uh, you have uh, audio there, audio listeners, and, and so on. So we'll go ahead. This is a rigid body. We will give this guy some mass. Gravity will affect it. You can delete the, the component right there, by the way. So let's add back in. And this is, again, physics. It has a collision shape. So we could do it with 
uh, a box shape or a mesh. But instead, let's just go ahead. We'll stick with a box like so. I think I noticed the box is defined around the shape. So then we can just kind of drill, uh, drill it and create it so that it it's properly-ish the right size. Bound it like there. Okay, so there is our collision shape. We can preview our game over here. So let's go ahead and run it. And then boom, you'll see the Kalizics fly, colliding in the world. So you get this lightweight editor, world editing environment. You get all these various different game components available to start developing your game. And that is kind of the nutshell of the tooling that's available here. You've got things here for textures and uh, model input and animation, sorry, and importing and so on. Once again, using asset importer on the back end. So that is the tooling if you want to go ahead and use that to create your own projects. Another thing we can do, and it's going to have me fire up trusty terminal here. So let's just make it so you can see what I'm doing. All right, so let's go into our temp folder right here. Uh, make dir uh, fork. Let's go into fork like so. And now we're going to go ahead and do the .NET version of it. So we can do .NET uh, new install uh, rbfx template dot third person. Now this uses NuGet to install uh, the required template. Now you're going to notice it's not actually doing anything. Oh, it, it reinstalled it. So basically I'd already installed it. So that's why you're getting the, the message that you got there is because I have done this once in my past. So now what I'm going to do is go ahead and actually create a version of this. So dot net new rbfx uh, third thread third person dash n my game. All right, so there we go. This is going to create our project and it's created successful. Let's go ahead and take a look. And then what you're going to notice, by the way, it creates this in the directory that you are currently in. That's one of those key things you're going to want to be aware of when you go and do something like this. Because, yeah, that's an issue. If you uh, if were like at C colon root or something thinking you were doing this in a subdirectory, you were not. Now, what you'll notice here is this did create a solution file for us, my game SLN. So let's just go, go ahead and fire that up. So this is if you're going to work with the experimental C-sharp template side of things. You're going to notice this fires it up inside of Visual Studio. Uh, we'll give this a second. Uh, you get this warning that you don't have the proper version of the SDK available, uh, but it, it, it doesn't seem to be right, and I do have it installed. So I don't know what's going on. Oh, lovely. I also get an ad for GitHub Copilot because Microsoft, yeah. Uh, so you can notice over here, your project's available here, all your base source code. We'll take a look at that in just a second. And what you're going to do is pick the project you want to try your demo on. So in this case, it is the desktop. So I'm going to go ahead and set that as my startup project. We will go ahead and do a run of mygame.desktop, getting an idea of a simple game created using Oroho 3D C Sharp Edition. So if you want to use and learn it using C Sharp, here is your option. So you can see main menu uh, create a new game loads up and then it's like a third person animated demo and we can run around in the world I could I can throw crates at people and so on so this is what the environment looks like first aid kit pick them up and so on so that is a sample game available uh, you go here, so you've got your platform-specific versions of it, so Android, desktop, iOS, and test, and so on. The majority of your game logic is going to be in here. So here is your main menu. Uh, everything is done via states, so you switch between various different states in your game. By the way, this can be entirely done using C++. You do not need to use uh, C Sharp at all, by the way. Uh, you can also script using AngelScript, I believe, as well. So here's an idea of... Uh, you create these basic, uh, so this is your main menu, various different callbacks there for handling it. Uh, and then you've got, um, so there is your game state. So this is the primary game. Once again, all these things are states. You switch between various different states when you do stuff. It's sort of um, the, the way that uh, the logic is split up for you. So you can see a simple idea of how uh, the game is run. The logic is all available here. So it gives you an idea. Once again, if you head on back over uh, to Urho, uh, you're going to find uh, here, so in the Rebel Fork, uh, the RBFX base, there is this sample project here as well. This is where you would go if you want to go the C++ route. So if you'd rather use C++ instead of the C Sharp, which by the way, the C Sharp was available. It's a little bit more hidden. Uh, so you go into the repositories here. It's not one of their pinned repositories, but the C Sharp is available here, the RBF RBFX C Sharp third person. That is the project we used. And we did it ultimately using, um, oh, what the hell is it called? 
uh, NuGet, so it kind of made it all transparent to us. Uh, but the sample project is available over here if you want to do it with C++. Uh, and then what you'll notice here is if you come in here, go to uh, source, for example, it's broken down into different sites. So you got editor, and this is the embedded editor that we ran earlier on. This shows you how you can easily create a plugin. Uh, so this is a custom application for the editor, adding a plugin of type create random box. You're going to notice create random box here. This is the plugin for, well, creating a random box. So you can extend the editor. So if you want to customize it to your own game, you can do it that way. And then the other thing you'll notice here is application. And here is how the applications are set up. And once again, all using state. So sample project over here. Uh, and then it switches between the various different states that are available. So you'll see here, uh, new game, you'll load up the state manager and you will load in a uh, sample game screen state and then you can queue that in. Same with menu, the menu is just a menu screen uh, state that's brought in. So here is your menu scene, for example. And this is how you would implement the logic using C++ if you're interested in that. So it's definitely an interesting project. There are a few things to be aware of and they actually tell you that right here in the repository about why you would use it and why you wouldn't. At least I thought that was right. Yeah, reasons to use. So multiple game engines out there, both proprietary and free. Here are some of the reasons why you might want to try this one. It's code first framework with full code over, control over code execution, unlike Unity-like game engines with an IDE first approach and script sandboxes, portable, relatively lightweight, uh, and then it's a fork of a mature and stable Urho 3D. Like I said, it's been around since 2011. So it's more feature rich and well tested than a lot of non mainstream game engines out there. And if you already use Urho 3D, you may want to try this framework. If you like Urho 3D but are not sort of currently satisfied with the feature set, and then there are a number of reasons why you would not use it as well. And I think you probably know a lot of the reasons not to use it and uh, are probably ignoring them if you're a member of this channel anyways. So that, ladies and gentlemen, is Urho 3D. Now to point out, there is another option out there called U3D. Uh, I will probably take a look at this at some point in time as well. It's another uh, engine that is inspired by or literally based off of Urho 3D and a couple of other inspirations as well. Let me know if you're interested in seeing me cover uh, U3D at some point in time. And then again, Urho 3D is pretty much dead. Uh, just one of those things to be aware of. So if you liked the idea of Urho 3D, uh, it lives on in RBFX or Rebel Fork. Uh, and hopefully you found what I just showed here interesting. It is cool that there is that uh, C-sharp side of things. By the way, if you do want to get started, there is documentation for getting started with C++ developers. And there's also the one here for getting started with C-sharp developers. Now you're going to find the documentation is a little bit on the minimalistic side. Just one of those things you're going to want to be aware of. There is reference documentation for the various different classes, but it tends to be fairly minimal. And a lot of times you're going to be pretty on your own for how the heck you go and do things. So if you're a complete noob to the world of game development, you're much better picking a Unity or or a Godot, or a Game Maker, or RPG Maker, or something like that. Uh, but if you're willing to get your hands dirty, kind of dig into the code, uh, this one might be an interesting one to check out. So ladies and gentlemen, that is RBFX, or also known as Rebel Fork. Let me know what you think. Comments down below. I'll talk to you all later. Goodbye.